Hello everybody, welcome to Grace Bear Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Hey, we're going to do another stout. The one we had yesterday was that uh, uh, easy drinking sessionable stout from Breckenridge. This is Otter Creeks and they're known to do a lot of mainstream sessionable low ABV beer too. This is the Russian Imperial Stout and Otter Creek, they're out of Vermont. And this is a limited edition Russian appearance, 10% ABV on this one. So this is double the alcohol than the one we did yesterday. And I don't know if it's dated yet. I don't see anything on the label. But with 10%, basically, if you can get lucky enough to get a year, you're doing good. So you just, just want to know what year it was put in the bottle in case you want to sell it. And I don't think there's anything that we really need to read off the label. So we'll set that down and get on with this one. Russian Imperial Stout. I don't see a, a, a IBV, IBV, IBU on this beer. Oh yeah, here we go. 65. So fairly bitter. So they're going to have to put a lot of bittering hops in this beer to counteract that much malt being a 10% beer. So we'll see how bitter it is when we drink it here, guys. Let's get back on the here. A rotating schedule. Food pairing, since it's a stout, the, the basic description is chocolate dessert. So, I don't know how many desserts I'd want to have a beer this big with, unless you were going to bed immediately after you ate it. The uh, glass purpose, pint, becker, bonnet, the tumbler, snifter. I got the dual glass, just like I used yesterday, guys. I, the stouts, I, I like uh, I probably should have put the other one yesterday in a pint glass, but I like to enhance those aromas a little bit by putting them in this type of glass. The uh, the beer, of course, being a 10 percenter, it's going to keep for years and years and years and years. So we're not going to keep it that long. Let's get the cap off this bad boy. Otter Creek. I hope I'm pleasantly blown away by this beer because, like I said, a lot of their stuff is okay. Let's go down the center here. Oh, that looks like motor oil coming out. Don't see any red rubiness like I did out of the one yesterday. I don't think this is going to be quite as thin as the one we had yesterday. And I poured it super aggressive. We got about a half a finger of head. It is a rich, dark, creamy head looking head. Over to the light, there is none. There's absolutely none. It's pitch black. I can tell that by pouring it out of the bottle. It looks like the motor oil out of my bike when I change it. So let's get a nose on this. I hope it smells better than that motor oil. Deep, rich coffee and chocolate and roasted malt. I am getting a little of the alcohol though. It's ten percent. So the fresher you're going to get this, the more the alcohol. A lot of these big beers like this, if you keep them for a year or two, they will mellow out a little bit. They'll settle down in the alcohol, the ABV. It smells very cocoaish, chocolatey, coffee. Roasted malt, toffee, caramel, it's got it all going on here. Good smelling beer. Well, if it's that time, let's put it to our lips. Cheers, everybody. Wow, yeah. Tasty, tasty. Cocoa, chocolate, and it's a, it's a bittersweet chocolate too. It's not a milk chocolate. Wow, a lot of roasted malt, caramel toffee, and maybe a little liquor liquor in there too. Wow, tasty, tasty. Probably one of the better, if not the best, Otter Creek beer that I've had.
That's wonderful. That is really, really, really good. I hope this has got some kind of date on it. I'd like to give this a good grade. So we're going to let it warm up. Let her drink. Sit for two or three maybe out of it. And we'll come back and do the final chug. Wow, that's a very tasty beer. Might have to fire up a cigar with this one. Mm, mm, mm. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little bit left. This is a pretty damn awesome beer. I, like I said earlier, I think it may be the best Otter Creek beer that I've had so far. Let's look on the bottle and see if we can see any kind of coat. Oh, look at here. I think it says December 3rd, 2012. So, that's not quite a year old. Very tasty, though. That would explain why it's not real boozy. If I'd have probably got this in December of last year, it would probably have had a big boozy taste. Just, I'm guessing, just my opinion of what it is. So, it's almost a year old, about eight, eight or nine months old. This is eight, end of eight, August. So, uh, it's mellowed out quite a bit, I would think. But we'll, uh, we'll reserve judgment on that because I haven't had a fresh one before. So, that being said, let's go with the final chug here, guys. Oh, wow. The other half loved it. Twice the beer is the one we had from breakfast yesterday. It's ABV and in taste. It is uh, very tasty. Roasted malt. Chocolate, coffee, toffee, caramel. Perfect amount of bitterness against the sweet malt. Very well balanced beer in my opinion. It does have a, a little bit of a bitter back end, but they have to do that to get the uh, the, the balance there uh, between the sweet malt and and the, and the hops there. So very tasty, guys. And it's got a code on there that tells you the date. It's and they have another time code right above that, but. Very tasty. As long as he's got a coat, and it's a little bit bigger than the one Breckenridge uses. A little easier to read, too. Not when the bottle is sweating like it was when it's fresh out of the fridge. But now that it's dried up, you can read that. So, as long as we can get a, get something like that, that that's legible and we can read without having to get a microscope or anything like that, it's a good thing. It's a win-win thing for everybody. For, for the brewer, if you get a beer that's out of date and tastes nasty, you're not going to buy that beer again. So, you think that's going to be good for them? No. Uh, do you think it's going to be good for you? No. So we got to have the dates, guys. If you get into a craft beer business, you need to have a dating machine and something legible and not some kind of Julian code. I harp on that all the time, guys. But and, and, and most of them are, are getting better. The ones that weren't dating are dating now. So maybe they're hearing me and all the rest of the people complain about uh, not having dates on the bottle. So. It's a, it's a win-win for both them and us when they do do that. So, with that being said, let's go over to the rate. I'm going to give this beer a pretty good rating. Uh, I don't know if it's quite to an eight beer rating. Uh, I think it's kicking a, kicking right at the door, but it's got the date code on it. So, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give them an eight, which is an A-. minus. Probably, the, and another reason I'm, I'm going to give them that good of a grade is it's probably the best beer that I've had from Otter Creek. So, if you had that, give me some comments back on this one, whether you liked it or didn't like it. Beer Advocate says it's 89, and they're good range, so they're right at, they're kicking on the doors. I consider A's from 90s and up, and that's 89, so it's it's kicking on the door. That's, that's a B plus in my opinion, and I could gave it, I could have gave it a B plus, but it's the best beer that I've had from them uh, that I could recall. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. I'm gonna give them the A minus, and let's go over to. Uh, Rate Beer says it's 99 overall, so that's really good numbers, but only 80 in the style. So I don't know what they're liking, not liking about the style there. I thought it fit the style pretty well. So if you've had it, give me some comments back on this. And as always, guys, rate, comment, subscribe. You know what we're going to do tomorrow? That's right. We're going to look in the fridge. See everybody then.